a clump of reeds grew out of the stinking swamp. It was a short, hollow reed. There was something in that hole beneath the rock. As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there. A long-toothed, snarling, furry wild thing. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous. The branch wasn't as strong as I'd thought. That branch had helped me all it was going to. The rock was partially overgrown by creepers. It was a needle of rock in the middle of the clearing. It didn't look like a natural formation. I remembered Ketch's log. For is it not writ 
that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Seemed pretty relevant now. No good. I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. The creeper just came away from the rock as I pulled it. The marker clipped firmly onto the net. Great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized. Initials had been carved into the rock. Initials carved into the stone read F.K. Frederick Ketch had been here. Three shallow holes had been made in the rock. Joining the dots would make an equilateral triangle. Joining the dots would make an equilateral triangle. It was Bronson's theodolite, now being put to a nobler use than petty larceny. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. It was a good cave for hiding treasure in. Shame about the flooding problem. It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, that had to be where Ketch had hidden his treasure.
the Xibalba princess lay at anchor just below Tower Bridge. I knew I'd found the right ship as soon as I saw Pablo at the rail. A guard patrolled the deck. He was sure to be armed. It was the door to the boat's main cabin. It was a porthole to the main cabin. A ladder gave access to the cabin's roof. It looked like the door to some sort of utility locker. Metal hooks had been welded onto each side of the door frame. A mop for swabbing the deck stood against the wall. The gangplank crossed a collection of heaving litter. I suppose the Thames was under it somewhere. It was risky, but I thought I could get to the next crate unseen. Got you. But the Kola woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone, you're sure? Yes, of course, it's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Garzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, UBA. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priest's plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. That Scatlepoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for this world. We have spoken of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died, you know. What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Karzak! Which one? It was the Jaguar stone that Oubier had stolen from the museum. 
It was identical in size and shape to the Coyote Stone, a stylized carving of a jaguar decorated one side. 